Hey everybody, it's Dr. Hyman, how you doing? We're back and I am excited to have with me a guest today to talk about food. Uh, yummy food products that are often hard to find because there's a lot of junk out there and you want to eat good food. So uh, I'm really excited to have today uh, this incredible um, company's founder, co-founder, Autumn Fladmo smith Paleo Valley is the company and also Wild Pastures, which is a regenerative uh, meat delivery company. And this is so important because we need more and more companies that help to uh, bring regenerative products to the market and, and I'm so glad that they're doing this. We're going to talk about this. So Autumn holds a master's in holistic nutrition. She's a certified eating psychology coach, an FDM practitioner. She really got interested in health because she ended up with irritable bowel syndrome and was just miserable and not until she changed her diet did she really uh, actually shift her health pretty dramatically. And as a result, about 10 years ago, she started on a paleo diet and uh, ended up actually starting a company we called the Paleo Valley, which I definitely use. It's gotten great products in terms of, um, you know, grass-fed meat bars and and, and, and super food protein bars and, and all kinds of great supplements. So they're pretty awesome. Uh, I'm gonna try to get her on now and see if we can we can get her get her invited. Um, so just give me one sec. Um, and so if we can get her on Paleo Valley. There we go. Um, so um, hopefully she's coming and uh, oh you like the book <laughs> um, I'm so excited to uh, to talk about this topic because I, I think you know most of us are are in this pandemic and we're you know we're just needing to figure out what to eat and, and we're looking for you know things that make things a little bit easier and and so paleo valley does that and I and I love their products I, I, I think my <laughs> my um, uh, snacks often are you know protein and fat, and that's why I like them, because I don't want starch and sugar, um, and that's great. Uh, we've got so many people from all over the world here, Panama, Oregon, Turkey, Ecuador, uh, Brazil, um, amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, all right, let's see if we can try to get her on. Um, again, I'm sorry. Not we might have to do this another time. Okay. There. Hello? There you are, finally, yes. okay. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Hyman, so sorry about the connectivity issues. No, that's all right, sometimes, you know, uh, Instagram updates their software, but they don't tell you you have to update it until yeah. <laughs> it's too late. That's so it's exactly great to see happened. you. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? Really great. grateful so to be here. Of course. Well, I gave everybody a little introduction about who you are, but let's just sort of dive right in. Talk about, you know, what inspired you to start Paleo Valley and Wild Pastures? I mean, this is not easy to start companies and, you know, it takes a lot of work and determination and, uh, you know, something triggered it. And I wanted to just have you share a little bit about what that might be. Yeah. Well, when I was around 10 or 11, I started to develop some pretty debilitating digestive issues. And um, the doctors at the time couldn't really fix me. They just diagnosed me with irritable <laughs> bowel syndrome. And my skin started to break out because they were left unaddressed. Eventually, I started developing some mental health challenges, depression and anxiety. And I really struggled all the way through high school. I even, I got kicked out of my parents' home. My behavior was a little bit out of control. And unfortunately, I kind of had this learned helplessness thing going because no doctor had an answer for me at the time. I didn't understand the connection between what I was eating and how I was feeling. So I just learned to like, you know, make it happen anyway. And I did some professional dancing. I was a professional fitness trainer, celebrity fitness trainer for a while. But when my husband, like met me and got really close to me and finally moved in with me, he realized I was really struggling. And so mm. he wanted better for his wife. We found the paleo diet like 2009 and I was reticent, but I tried it and my digestive health improved. And then I had a number mm. of other things improve and I was just blown away by the potential. So I invited 200 of my friends to do the same thing. They saw incredible results and I knew, okay, I have this dream job with Tracy Anderson, but I'm gonna have to quit it and I'm gonna have to spread this message about the healing power of food. And so I went back to school and I've just been devouring anything related ever since. 
Oh, that's great. Well, you know, I think a lot of um, a lot of discoveries come from people's own health struggles, and and you know, uh, you know, paleo essentially is cutting out grains and beans and eating whole foods and high quality protein, nuts and seeds, and and essentially it's it's you know, um, it's on the spectrum of things that people can use to heal their bodies, and not and, and I think uh, sort of the vegan diet I wrote as sort of a way of sort of being more inclusive and saying, okay, look, you have to figure out what, one food is medicine, and two. We have to personalize everything. So what worked for you might not work for somebody else, right? So I think they work for you because you probably had significant digestive issues and people with digestive problems don't do well with grains and beans. And I think they, they, there's a very important piece of information that people understand that you have to look at what works for you. So what, what happened when you changed uh, and went on a paleo diet? Basically, within 30 days, it was really remarkable. My digestive symptoms were gone that I had suffered from for over a decade, and my skin started to clear up. And my mental health, I went from being this person who had these extreme highs and lows to someone who was just more stable and peaceful. <laughs> and like, I got really excited. I just, I felt inspired and um, empowered mostly. And what I learned was that like fitness is different than wellness. And I, I was always a fit person. I wasn't always a well person. And so my whole life transformed. Just that feeling that I got from knowing that I could do something and play a role in how I was going to feel, um, it just sent me on a totally different trajectory than I was on prior to that. Yeah, it's so, it's so great. And, and you're, you, know, you really have been inspired to create this incredible company that I've been impressed with. And the products are just so yummy and delicious. Um, you know, and, 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 it, and it's a way for people to get access to things that are, you know, often hard to get and hard to find the ingredients and you sort of make it super simple for people. Um, what, I, what I wanted to know is, is what, what have you found around the, the connection between eating this way and, and a diet and mental health? And what are the things that people can do really to, to fix their mental health? I'm loving that this is becoming a more mainstream conversation because when I started, I didn't really know it. But around 2010, there was some pioneering research by Dr. Felice Jacka, and we at least <laughs> began to see associations that when you eat more processed foods, you have an increased risk for things like depression and anxiety. And then we had the SMILES trial, which showed us that not yeah. only was there an association, but there, it can be a treatment for even um, serious and major depressive disorders. So the three things I always tell people is that a lot of times depression is related to inflammation. And yeah. there's, yes, right? Antidepressants, they can work on neurotransmitter imbalances, but finding out why you're imbalanced in the first place is an even better idea. So finding the foods that were inflammatory for you, and this you know, differs. For me, it's gluten. For a lot of people on their mental health, it's gluten. Not everyone, but a lot. Processed foods for sure. And, you know, some people dairy and on and on. Like you're saying, you Sugar. have to personalize it. <laughs> oh, geez. Sugar, Sugar yeah. soda. Yeah. yeah. The standard American diet, basically. Yeah. So I mean, trying something. You know, it's so true what you said, Autumn, that, that people don't realize that when their brain is inflamed, yeah. you, you know, it can't say ouch, right? If you have a yes. sore throat, it hurts, right? But if your brain hurts from inflammation, it comes out as depression, anxiety, mental illness, uh, brain fog, cognitive issues, dementia, Alzheimer's, you know, Parkinson's. Yeah. So, so really connecting the dots between the food you're eating and your brain health, um, particularly inflammation in the brain, is so important. And I, and I think that's really a really important point. All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about... Um, what you're doing around wild pastures and, and regenerative agriculture. I wrote in my book uh, a quote from Russ Conzer who said, it's not the cow, it's the how. And I think we get in this divisive war between paleo and vegan. I'm, I'm sort of trying to like sort of get rid of all that craziness because they're, they're actually almost the same when it comes to the nutritional sort of qualities. If you, if you look at really what, yes, I mean, they're, they're identical except for where you get your protein, right? Yeah. Uh, and I, I think uh, then if you're going to get protein, you know, the, the whole idea of eating factory farm animals is, is really horrible for most people. I mean, one, it's bad for the animals, it's bad for the planet, it's bad for, for us when we eat the meat that's full of, you know, industrial ingredients and hormones and antibiotics and who knows what else. So um, he says it's not the cow, it's the house. So talk about why we should be focused on regenerative agriculture and regenerative farms for our own health and the health of the planet. I'm so excited about this. Obviously, we created a whole company around it, but my favorite analogy is just to think of cows like a hammer. Like you said, most animal products are raised in confined animal feeding operations and for the environment and for our health, 
that's obviously a hammer being used to destroy something. But you can also use a hammer for growth <clears throat> to build a house. And regenerative agriculture is a type of agriculture that comes in and rejuvenates the soil health and actually can sequester carbon. So when it comes to nutrient deficiency, what we have to realize is we've been living in this degenerative relationship with our earth for a really long time due to these extractive agricultural practices and the chemicals we're using. And as a result, our nutrient d density of our crops has been on the decline for 50 to 70 years. And so regenerative agriculture can come in and restore the health and the fertility and the vitality of the soil and the relationships between the plants and the nutrients that are in the soil. But when that soil biology is destroyed, the plants aren't always able to access it. So through healing the soil, we can have the plants access it. And when it comes to environmental health, it's really important because a lot of us know atmospheric levels of carbon are rising. This is essentially heating the earth. And what's been found is that regenerative agriculture practices, when you put animals on land and when you get rid of the pesticides and the chemicals and when you stop tilling, you can actually sequester carbon and reduce the amount of carbon that's emitted in the first place. So yeah. a lot of people today are thinking sustainable, but because we've already been in such a degenerative relationship, I think it's time that we really get excited about regenerative because that's where we have to go and our company is around that. We wanted to create a demand and a supply for people so that they actually could be sure that they were supporting regenerative agriculture um, in their choices when they, when they choose what to eat. That's great. So tell us about Wild Pastures and, and, and how it's different and, w and what you guys do and, and why it's, 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 it's a solution, as you say, to nutrient deficiency. Yeah, so Wild Pastures. criteria we only source from regenerative farms more importantly that are here in America because you can actually import animal products and then process them in the United States and then they are labeled as a product of the United States I think that's a start but I think we're missing a bigger opportunity to heal American soil and so we do all regenerative farms no corner credit <laughs> always American and most importantly we keep it wholesale prices because we know that consumers don't, we don't want it to be an elitist thing anymore. And we really need a lot of people to join this mission in order to move the needle. And so we essentially cut out the middlemen by connecting the farmers and in increasing demand for their product right to the consumers who want them. And the last thing is, it's not just the animal products that we're considering and uh, when it comes to human health and environmental health, from birth to doorstep, we're thinking about recyclable and compostable packaging. We're using solar yeah. powered facilities. We're driving um, vans around delivering where, wherever we can. And as we evolve and grow, it will only, that uh, commitment to that will only grow as well. So we're excited. Yeah, it's so great. And I think what you're saying is so important. And people are finding, how do I get regenerative meat? How do I eat like a regenerative Which is one of the principles of the vegan diet. And it's hard for people to figure it out. But you're, you're, what you're saying is that this is an online wholesale regenerative meat basic delivery service. That's exactly right. And you get to yeah. choose your box and customize it. And it's, we've started a, um, a warehouse in Denver and in Phoenix, and we just put a letter of intent in Southern California. So the goal is to be national so that everyone can be consuming meat that comes, you know, raised regeneratively, humanely slaughtered, and then also um, in their bioregion. Because we yeah. need to have a really secure and stable source of food here in America as well. Yeah, we well, thank that. you. This, this is great. And so, so tell us more about Paleo Valley and, and uh, why its products are so different and what are the favorite products you have? Okay, well, we are perfectionists. And when it comes to Paleo Valley, every single ingredient matters to us. And that's why they call us the ingredient snob. So my favorite product is probably um, our grass-fed beef stick. This is our best seller. And what's cool about it is it's literally sourced from American regenerative farms every single time. It's just organic spices. And in order to avoid a lot of the really problematic uh, preservatives and other ingredients in beef sticks, we ferment them. So they wow. can take naturally occurring probiotics and they taste different as a result. So they're not like chewy. They're more like tender and they have a little snap, kind of like a hickory smoked summer sausage. And kids love them. Parents love them. Um, that, so that's definitely my favorite. And they come in five flavors. And turkey. For people who don't love beef, we do a pastured turkey variety that is also AIP friendly. So um, my other favorite is probably our Essential C Complex. And this is like most, actually over 90% of the vitamin C on the market is derived from genetically modified corn. And it's also ascorbic acid. <clears throat> so it's just one 
fraction of the whole vitamin C molecule. And so we wanted to create the world's most potent natural vitamin C. So we have camu berry, amla berry, and unripe acerola cherry in a vegetarian capsule. And so that is the most potent one that we know of and all organic, of course. And then lastly, we have a really cool turmeric product. Um, turmeric, we all know, is very, very anti-inflammatory, amazing. And um, what most people don't appreciate is lead contamination can be an issue. So of course we wanted organic. Bioavailability is pretty uh, notoriously terrible with turmeric. And so we added heat and black pepper and coconut milk powder. And last, like turmeric and curcumin are different, right? And so I'm all about curcumin, it's great. But again, there's over 200 compounds in turmeric and a lot of them like AR tumorone has been shown to help brain cells proliferate. Elamine yep. is another benefit. Like, I just feel like for a daily preventative use, I like turmeric. And so that's what we did. Organic turmeric, all of those things that increase bioavailability, as well as rosemary, ginger, and clove, because they're some of the most DNA oh, protective spices. Yeah, those are all phytochemicals, and they're great foods, medicine products, and I think sort of all of that combination. Um, I think a couple of people were commenting on, you know, just the fact that, uh, you know, you can't humanely slaughter animals. And I, I think I would just sort of raise, raise a uh, sort of oh. issue here for people to understand. I think this is, this is where I think we get into ideology. First of all, I think you have to pay attention to your body. Uh, the whole idea is that we should personalize our approach to eating and that we should be focused on what works for us. And what maybe being a vegan works for some people and they feel healthy and thrive on it. Other people won't. Some yeah. people do fine on a paleo diet, others won't. So it's really about listening to your body and not having your ideology rule over that. Second yeah. is um, factory farming of animals should be abolished 100%. But regenerative agriculture is a very different approach to growing animals. And it actually, yes, you know, they have a different, very different life. <laughs> they, they're eating grass and they're doing their natural stuff and they're building soil and they're part of a, a general ecosystem. And yes, they do die at the end for sure. Now, but you don't have to eat animals if you don't want to, but, but they are part of the ecological cycle of restoring um, the soil and building soil, which will help reverse climate change. But what most people don't realize is that even if you're a vegetarian or vegan, if you're eating vegetables, you're, you're involved in an inherently destructive act. And I've been reading a book called Nourishment by a professor from University of Utah or Utah State, actually, Fred Provenza, who uh, it's a beautiful book about, uh, about uh, how we, this, this whole world we live in is one big restaurant consuming itself. So we become food at the end. We go and, into the earth and we decompose and we become food for the plants. And, then, and we're in this part of the cycle. If, if you look at these studies on, on, on just plant uh, agriculture, there are 7 billion animals killed every year just by the destructive nature of agriculture. If you're plowing a field, if you're destroying the natural habitat, we've killed 50% of all our bird species. We've, we actually, uh, you know, if, you're, if you have a cabbage patch and there's a rabbit that gets killed um, as part of the harvesting of the cabbage, how is that any less an issue than, you know, uh, a goat or a sheep or a cow? I, I mean, is a life different than any other life? I don't know. You have to answer that question yourself. But you're, you're not going to get away from being part of this cycle of life uh, that is just the, the world consuming itself. So uh, I think that's just, that's just a fallacy. Um, and, and yes, you, know, you can remove yourself from it, but uh, it's, it's, it's still there in the background. Uh, and I think you know, what you're doing is great work. And I think the, the, uh, the education of people around regenerative agriculture is really critical. I think you know, giving people an option for those who can't tolerate grains or beans of good food products and bars, I think is great. So I'm super excited for your company. It's Paleo Valley and also Wild Pastures. People can check it out. I'm sure they can find it online. Where can they learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, so you can visit us at paleovalley.com. And for your listeners, you can use Dr. Hyman 15. It's just a code because we appreciate you. And um, you can look at all of our other products. We've got a lot going on. And for the meat delivery service, it's wildpastures.com. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Autumn, thanks so much. You guys have a great day. And, uh, and I love chatting with you. And we'll talk to you next time. Okay, thank you for this opportunity.